Well, Netflix disappointed me with this one, and I'm talking about uh, 2020's October Faction Season 1 on Netflix, straight to Netflix. Um, yeah, I had high hopes for this. Um, I thought it would have uh, really been one of those things that I would have been looking forward to seeing more seasons of. Monster Hunting. I'm really into that. I enjoyed all the variations of it. I, I, I'm a big fan of uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I'm a big fan of Supernatural. And then I saw the first episode of October Faction, and I was pretty much into it. Um, I saw quite a motley crew of characters, monster hunters. Um, I was willing to go along with the ride, and yet season, or excuse me, episode two, episode three, by the fourth episode, it seemed like, no, we weren't going to get very much monster hunting. We were going to get a lot of uh, soap opera type drama between um, the evil bad guy organization called the Presidio and um, a faction of supernatural creatures called uh, warlocks, who also happen to be male and female, but they're called warlocks. Yeah, it got bogged down in that, and I didn't find it very interesting, and uh, I sat through the whole thing. I watched all ten episodes so that I could give it a fair review, and I'll have to say that I'm just, uh, I find myself disappointed. Um, it needed more monster hunting. I I really appreciated the crazy characters, the, uh, the parents, the fact that the parents had a dynamic that I hadn't seen uh, before in a show like this. They seemed to be... Um, Characters that logically fit together with a little bit of uh, explanation, but on the surface level, you know, it just didn't look like they belonged together. They were very, um, you know, it looked like a, a foster family. In fact, it turned out it was pretty much a foster family in the end. Um, you know, it just would have worked if it just hadn't got bogged down in this uh, soap opera plot with these warlocks and this Presidio. I mean, it's like too much of that was crammed into 10 episodes. I thought this uh, should have spent more time monster hunting. If you look back at a show like Supernatural, it didn't try to cram in the entire Winchester background into like the first few episodes. No, it had a lot of episodes that were stand um, standalone monster hunting episodes with uh, the overall story arc being moved along a little bit as the show continued, and you had episodes that were straight up continuing the overall Winchester story um, story arc. But it's a very good balance, you know, and it's a balance that a lot of TV shows have pulled off really well, but it's not pulled off well at all in October Faction. Um, it just it promises, it promises from the beginning to be into the monster hunting, and then it just like it goes totally into just bogged down into this overall story between Presidio and the Warlocks and it just by itself it just wasn't um, what was promised from the beginning and it wasn't that interesting and um, I didn't find the high school drama even the gay characters to be off-putting at all I thought that was that was decent it, it could have worked if we just had the monster hunting, and yet we got so very little of that, and that's what I'm going to say is the major fail here. Now, 49% on the audience score. I think that's about fair, judging the whole thing, all 10 episodes. The first uh, one or two episodes, they were great, and then it just went down and never got back up again. But let's get right into the audience reviews. There are only 387, uh, probably because this is not that popular, and it is just only found on Netflix. Now, it says Season 1. I'm kind of hesitant to believe there will be more seasons, because if it continues like this, please don't make more seasons. Um, if you want to go straight into monster hunting, this could be redeemed. It's not irredeemable, but I just have the feeling that we won't see more seasons. But nonetheless, it's called season one. Um, let's get right to the audience reviews. Uh, there aren't very many and see what other people think. Uh, six hours ago, one and a half stars. 
It was a bit shaky at the start, but I expect that from a new program. Unfortunately, it went quickly downhill and never fulfilled its potential. I thought it was a great idea and was willing to go along with it despite its problems, but it just kept getting worse and worse. You know what? I'm going to pretty much agree with that. I'll say one and a half stars. Maybe it hit two stars at some parts. But I'm going to largely say I agree with one and a half stars, and I'm going to pretty much agree with that reviewer. Um, like I said, it started great. I didn't even think it started shaky. I thought it started fine. The first episode was great. I was interested. I wanted to see more. I definitely did. Then by about the fourth episode, I was kind of like forcing myself to keep watching it. But man, the first episode, I was like hooked all the way. But let's read on. February 11, uh, half a star. In the spirit of full disclosure, I didn't make it through the entire first season. The concept is solid, supernatural without the CW, but that is where the positives end. It might get better over time, but the fundamental problems are going to... Difficult to work out of the show, the characters are not likable, the writing is terrible, and the acting is mediocre. The dad is the best character, but casting a 90-year-old man who weighs 106 pounds as an awesome monster killer is tough to digest. Yeah, I'll agree. I think that the dad, he looked a little bit too old. Now, he's obviously not 90-something, he's not elderly, but in the show... Um, Kind of late into the show, it does specifically say how old he is. He was born in 1970, so that makes him um, 49 years old. Not quite 50 yet. Uh, I don't know about the actor, but he appears to be older than 50. That's the way he appears. Um, that's not unworkable. I mean, you can be 50 years old and be completely fit and completely... You can be an action star, no problem. You can kill monsters, but... Um, yeah, he did look a little bit frail. It wasn't just his age. It was just the fact that he looked like somebody that would have trouble picking up a large caliber rifle or handgun without shaking a bit. He d he looked weak. Uh, maybe he's not in real life, but he just didn't look like somebody that would be fighting monsters. Age aside, he just looked like a very thin, weak person. So, you know... If the show would have shown him as some kind of weapons expert, um, but it didn't really do that, it would have come across more believable. Or it had put him in the backseat role, like the planner, the guy behind the desk, so to speak. Uh, but no, he was straight up monster killing. He was an action type guy, and that wasn't really that believable, and I'll agree with that. Um, the wife, or the mom character... Uh, she's also probably about the same age. She's in very good shape for her age. Um, she also doesn't come across as being like an action type person, but again, she could be an expert in, um, weapons and tactics that would be believable. Um, this wasn't like a deal breaker for me, but I see where this, uh, reviewer is talking about, um, they're exaggerating. He's not 90, uh, but he does look like he's older than 50, despite the show saying that he's got to be 49. Um, let's read on two and a half stars. I managed to get through the first episode, but I won't be watching the rest. Netflix, what kind of god awful writers are you employing? I've written better stories than this in third grade. I realize this is for tweens and young adults, but seriously, you give them too little credit if you think they are just going to wholeheartedly swallow this crap. Well, I disagree that this was completely for tweens and young adults because just look at the family and like we have mentioned, uh, the mom and dad are like 49 years old or close to, uh, I don't know if the mom's age was specifically mentioned, but the dad is 49. The mom should be about that age. Um, so that's not really a character. Those aren't characters written for tweens or young adults. Um, so I disagree. I think this was made even for people my age. I think it was made to appeal to just about everybody and it just didn't do that. Uh, for me, some of the language doesn't work as well because I can respect a program that uh, doesn't have the restriction of being on network TV and they can drop F-bombs and etc. I respect that. I think that could work very well, but this movie chooses to do that at the wrong times. Um, it has characters dropping F-bombs and saying uh, shit and stuff like that at times where it just kind of pulls you out of the believability of the story. Um, 
the writers. They just didn't know how to do that. Um, I can appreciate that you can do that, right, on Netflix, but they just didn't do it the right way. Um, they're saying it's two and a half stars, that they just barely managed to get through it. Um, I say one and a half stars, and like them, I struggled to finish it. Um, I had to kind of ignore and forget about a lot of problems um, to get through the 10th episode. Um, but that first episode, it was so great. If it had just continued and gone into the monster hunting and slowed down a bit with the uh, the drama with uh, Presidio and whatnot, it would have been a lot better. Five stars, I'm not going to entertain that because this is an episode of Rotten Reviews for a reason. But I can respect that somebody out there just loved the hell out of this, but uh, I'm just not one of those people. Three stars, one day ago. I like the ideas of the show, but the things that interested me were pushed aside and rushed through, like for instance, the secrets of the house really interested me with hidden rooms and heirlooms of monsters and weapons or the history of the family monster hunting. I felt like they tried too hard to make it something it isn't, like Terminator. I feel like if written in a different perspective, it could be comparable to Supernatural without the religious play of it. Yeah, I pretty much think so too. I think that uh, they should have stuck with the monster hunting. Uh, they should have stuck, like I said, I liked it also where they went into the uh, family manor and there was the secret room with all the relics from all the other previous monster hunts. That was fascinating. I wanted to see more of that. I wanted them to pick up a relic and, you know, I wanted each episode to kind of explain over time how those relics came to be and the stories behind them. But we didn't get that. This thing just veered off into getting bogged down with this Presidio soap opera with the warlocks. Very disappointing, and I agree 100% that the first one or two episodes, they were fantastic, and then it just got bogged down in stuff and just forgot all about the monster hunting. Half a star, god-awful, plot is full of holes, coupled with not-so-great acting equals disaster. Don't waste your valuable time. Netflix should focus on quality and not quantity. Yeah, I agree, and I don't know if Netflix themselves developed this. You know, they put their name on it. A series will say Netflix original, but yet it can be from the BBC, or it can be also um, produced in another country and aired in another country, but then brought to Netflix. So it's hard to say whether this was just a Netflix-only production, but if it was, then yes, I agree. They need to focus on quality. They are borrowing billions and billions of dollars to keep putting out content and that's what we want to see not necessarily the borrowing part but we want to see new content and we want to see new content that is quality content not just throw anything at the wall and hope that it sticks it's got to be better than this um, let's move on one star the storyline could have been so much better but it is all over the place too dry in areas and way too much drama woke stuff in it i had high hopes but when the teenage son decides he will be getting a bj during a wake i was like this is beyond asinine yeah that stuff the woke stuff it could have worked it really could have if we had had the monster hunting and it was funnier like it had stuff in it that I can see putting in there, you know, like it had the gay characters and all this stuff. And that could have all worked if there was enough comedy and if there was enough monster hunting. But since there wasn't comedy or monster hunting, this uh, what you call the woke stuff, it just popped out and overwhelmed everything else during parts of this uh, series. And so not the fatal flaw, but it's certainly not a positive. It didn't help anything by doing that kind of stuff. Um, it should have been funny. Like, you know, when you say somebody's trying to get a BJ during a wake, you know what I think of? I think of a comedy. I think of something that would work in all kinds of comedy situations, but uh, that's not what happened here. I didn't find it funny, so yeah. Half a star. The characters in the series spend a lot of time talking about how kind and emphatic they are, and killing people, and rarely monsters, without hesitation, unless they don't have any weapons on hand. In that case, that talk about how kind and emphatic they are and treat everyone around them like feces. Yeah, well, the other problem is the monster hunting stuff doesn't have to be overly convoluted. Uh, Supernatural didn't like start out with season one being so complicated with stuff going on that you didn't know what was going on. In this show, 
Uh, we skip the monster hunting that's promised to us in the first episode, and we get into this stuff with Presidio and warlock societies and vampire covens and all this stuff, and it throws so many elements out there at the same time that we're very much confused as to, you know, when are we going to figure out what all these mysterious things being shown to us are, and how does this all work together? How does this world in the larger sense function? How serious are we supposed to take it? Um, you don't get a sense of that because it's just too convoluted. There are too many things going on. It should have stuck with the monster hunting and slowly introduced these concepts to us. Uh, we saw that in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. We saw that in Angel. Uh, we saw that in Firefly. Uh, a lot of things that can appeal to both teens and to adults. And they're not, they are complicated things, but they are not all thrown at us at one time in our face. We slowly uh, soak up the lore. We slowly figure things out. We slowly become interested in what's going on behind the scenes as things are revealed to us. But this show didn't do it like that. It just kind of threw out so much stuff so quickly that, and then just completely forgot about the monster hunting on top of it. And remember, this is a family that is a family of monster hunters. That's their purpose. That's their whole family's purpose. It has been their purpose um, through the generations. And yet, um, we got so little monster hunting. You know, it, it's like it literally promised us monster hunting at the beginning and then just forgot all about it and bogged us down with all this other nonsense that was kind of a chore to keep track of because of all the stuff and plots and subplots going on and characters double-crossing each other and jockeying for position within this Presidio organization. Um, it was a little bit too much, right? Or should I say a lot too much. Two stars. Series plot looked very promising. Unfortunately, the producers and writers decided to use this series as a constant PC statement to lecture the audience, which became tiresome after the third time, and that's why I'm giving it only two stars. Well, yeah, they made a point of, um, you know, they really hammered it home that there were a lot of gay characters. Um, they didn't have to do that so much. Um, for me, it's like, it wouldn't have been too much if there was a lot of monster hunting going on, but there wasn't. So there was all this um, pointless drama to show us, you know, the angst and the problems that um, closeted gay characters have versus ones that aren't. And it just overwhelmed a lot of everything else on top of, um, you know, where the hell's the monster hunting. So I can see why they're saying that. Um, three stars. Good show aside from all the social justice BS. Stop trying to please people who want a political statement and show more monsters. It's supposed to be entertainment, not let's see what buttons I can push. And along those lines, I'll say it also tried to give too many racial problem um, statements. I mean, it is 2020, so... Um, you know, there's this desire out there from the left-wing crowd, I guess, to just try to put racial uh, messages in everything. But um, we want to watch shows about monster hunting because we want to escape into a fantasy world. We don't need, like, continuous, like, plot points on, um, you know, why characters feel like they're being discriminated against or why characters show up in random places and just start becoming outright racist. Um, we just don't see this. On, when I go to the supermarket and I encounter all different types of people, I don't just randomly encounter uh, guys, like, saying racial things to other people. That's not the world I live in, but yet... In these shows, um, not just this show, but a lot of shows out there nowadays in 2020, 2019, there's just so much of this racial stuff. You know, somebody looking at this from another period in history would think that um, we are living in um, some kind of crazy um, racial society where everything's about your race everywhere we go, because that's what you see in these shows. And I'm sorry, but what happened to the monster hunting Um it's a monster hunting show that just like puts all this other stuff in your face too and again it probably would have like flew past me with no problem if we had had all of that monster hunting and we had had the comedy in the right places and the bad language had been in the right places um so 
Yeah, it's just like it's one of those things your mileage might vary. But for me, I can understand why people will bag on this just because of all the uh, SJW stuff. I can understand it. Half a star, very choppy and disjointed with, of course, all the appropriate social justice tropes. Could have been tolerated up until the gay BJ scene because that was necessary to move the plot forward. Yeah, like I said, there are actually plot points in this that hinge upon those social justice messages. It's not like they're just some spice in there. Things in the plot actually happen or don't happen because of these things, and that's that's not good in a monster hunting show. Where is the damn monster hunting? Again, can't repeat that enough. Three stars. I was on the fence. Seemed very derivative, X-Files, Supernatural, Grimm, all did this way better. Character development is meh. The story improved as the season progressed. I suspect it's one and done. Yeah, three stars is too high, but I also suspect there won't be a season two. Um, but if there is, I'll watch the first one to see if they fix these problems, and then that's it. One and a half stars, great promise, very poorly executed, too many plot holes, and shitty twists. Um, you know I didn't have a problem with the plot logic in a lot of ways. Um, and you know, if I did, I would have made one of my lists and I would have started jotting these things down. I'm sure there are problems in the plot, um, but there weren't any that stood out to me as being the flaw. Um, the flaw for me was that uh, it just forgot about the monster hunting and the social justice didn't help things. Yeah, I'm sure there were plot holes, but uh, not enough for me to say that was the problem. Half a star. Woke, unnecessary garbage, uncompelling, and a complete waste of time. Netflix really crapped the bed with this one. Well, somebody did. Somebody did. Two stars. Too much teenage angst, not enough monsters. Yeah, exactly. Even the teenage angst in here would have worked if we had had monsters, but we never got monsters. We got a lot of people claiming they were monsters, and we saw, you know, vampires, and we saw warlocks, and um, they were monsters, but um, only very superficially, and we got no mon monster hunting, no big bad villains that weren't just evil humans. Um, it was very disappointing, very disappointing. One star. If you are looking for well-acted, character-driven drama, look somewhere else. This series is a mess. The plot is poorly constructed, relying on twists rather than logic. But the thing I disliked the most was the pathetic attempt at portraying interpersonal relationships. There was no chemistry to be found, and the actors lacked the talent to sell it even a little bit. Cringeworthy, and that's being generous. Yeah, well... I don't think the acting was outright bad, but yeah, the actors and actresses weren't up to the task. Um, they went really deep into like high school drama and um, um, interspecies uh, supernatural stuff drama, a lot of drama, and uh, the younger actors and actresses really weren't experienced enough to pull this off. One character, I mean, they were experienced enough to pull off like being quirky at times, but to have convincing drama, um, not really. It was done so much better. For example, in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, those young actors and actresses did a far better job. So they just weren't up to the task. Uh, three stars. This show is just okay. Mm, no, I think it's a little lower than okay. I think it deserves to be rotten. It was okay until it got to like the third, fourth episode, and then it wasn't okay for me. Let's look through one more page of this. Um, half a star. What happened to good dialogue and believable characters? Why do so many decisions made by the characters feel forced and unnatural? Seemed like a good start, but really didn't go anywhere. Yeah, um, this really didn't go anywhere. Like, there should have been a lot of things that were left to other seasons. There should have been a lot of things that were left as mysteries and not just revealed to us so quickly. Um, it feels like we didn't get any reason to watch a season two because we f we were barely introduced to the um, the characters of the um, the adopted uh, son and daughter of the family, the monster hunter family. Uh, we were barely starting to figure out who they were, and then all of a sudden it was revealed that they're not really um, they don't really belong with their parents. They're actually warlocks that were stolen um, after they were born from somewhere else. Yeah, 
these are things that were just all too many of these type of reveals were put together in too short of a um, running time. These are things that needed to happen over the course of maybe one, two, or three seasons. Not all in one season in a few episodes. It just didn't work. Uh, too many things thrown together. Too many. Uh, one star. What a clunker. Once again, freaking Hollywood. Grandma is only 14 years older than her son. Wooden acting, bland, so much stereotyping and virtue signaling. Ugh. Yeah, that was, I did find that unrealistic. Like the father character, his mother could have been his age. Like she looks like maybe she's almost his age. Maybe she's 10 years older, 14 years older. I don't know. But yeah, when I first figured out that um, the father who's supposed to be my age that his mother also looks to be barely older than him, almost his age too. Yeah, that didn't work for me either. I kind of had to consciously ignore that to continue on with the story. But it wasn't the fatal flaw here, but it certainly didn't help anything. Um, yeah, they cast the wrong actors. Uh, I think they could have like they could have better cast the two kids and they could have cast um, some of the other characters better. I really did like the um, father and the uh, mother character. I thought they were quirky enough together and it should have been funnier. And I really enjoyed them. It was unique, but everybody around them didn't fit with them. And their age was part of the problem. Uh, half a star, really hard to watch, too busy trying to push an agenda than tell a story. Yeah, it feels that way because um, the story doesn't keep you wrapped up. You know, you don't get the monster hunting. So all the stuff that would probably pass by you without notice is just all out in your face, you know, as being some kind of woke message. Um, two stars, a passable midweek watch. And also quite bad in comparison to other Netflix originals. If there is a season two, I will not go out of my way to watch. Yeah, I won't go out of my way either, but I might take a look at uh, the first episode of season two. And if it doesn't impress me within the first 10 minutes, I'm just going to shut it off. Half a star. Hard to believe this one made it past the concept stage. Netflix has some outstanding originals, but this is emphatically not one of them. Half a star. Great idea that leads to nothing more than some quick action and horrible dialogue. You spend an entire season waiting for this epic battle between this family and the evil government agency just for the climax of the season finale to just end, fight, and jump a few days into the future. Nothing explained and all problem solved. Yeah, like I said, you don't get anything out of this at the end. There's no big climax. Um... It just leaves you kind of in limbo. One of the characters is literally in limbo. He's literally in a place called limbo, like between heaven and hell because he's dead. But that's how the show ends. You're just kind of in limbo. You don't really know what to think about it. You're not impressed. You're not uh, sad. You're not anticipating anything. It's just like it just lands there and you look at it and then you're just like, well, that was a whole lot of... Uh, Nothing, really. But I found it disappointing. You know, that's what I'm overall going to call this disappointing. Because the first episode, it really worked for me. And then it all just like went somewhere else and just went to nothing at the end. And um, I'm going to take a look at IMDb just to make sure there's not something going on on Rotten Tomatoes. Because, you know, this only has 387 user reviews and four critic ratings. But let's see, IMDb. 4,400 plus people actually gave it a rating. It has a 6.1 star out of 10 stars. Um, yeah, that's about, uh, that's still, well, actually, that would be just very slightly fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, but let's see what we have down here. Let's take a look at uh, user reviews. Here's a two-star review. I really tried to like this show. When I tuned into the first episode, I had high expectations for this show. In about 20 minutes, that faded. The acting is subpar, and the main character, the father, looks way too old compared to even his mother. I soldier on and made through three episodes before deciding that this hot mess was not going to get any better. This is not one of Netflix's finer moments. Yes, I pretty much 100% agree with that review. Um, 
and I think that's a nice way to end this thing. 6.1 out of 10. Obviously, some people do enjoy this, so who knows? Maybe it gets a season two, but I'm going to give it 10 minutes. I'm going to give it 10 minutes if I see an episode one of season two, and if it doesn't impress me in that 10 minutes, this one, I'm just going to forget all about it, and I advise you to just go into this knowing that um, you may not like this thing, or you may find it... Um, you know, something better than watching paint dry. And I will see you again on another episode of Rotten Reviews.